Hey guys, welcome to Flipside and Fuse. Woohoo! We're so excited that you guys get to join us this week. We're gonna have a fun time. My name is Caitlin and I am the new youth summer student, so I get to chill with you guys all summer long. We're gonna have lots of fun. A little bit about me is I love iced coffee, keeps me awake, tastes good, it's the whole package. I also have a little puppy named Callie. I'm sure you'll see her on our Zoom calls at some point. She's super cute. And I just love to get to know new people. So I'm so excited to get to meet all of you. We're gonna have a fun summer. If you don't already follow our social media, you can, they're at the bottom of the screen. We always post fun and encouraging stuff throughout the week. So you definitely wanna check that out. Also, if you are graduating grade eight, grade 12 or grade 13, we have a fun event coming up for you. On June 23rd, we are doing our graduation drive through So you get to come meet us at the church. We'll give you a gift basket and we just wanna celebrate with you that you're graduating this year. So you can register for that in the link in our bio on our Instagram, or you can ask your leader to send you the link and they can do that for you. So excited you guys are joining us for youth tonight. I'm gonna to hand it off to Nathan and Caleb for the laugh of the week. What's up guys? Welcome How's back. How's everyone doing? Woo! Let's go. I'm I'm doing great. How are you doing, Nathan? I'm doing good, Caleb. Even though, you know, we see each other every day. Yep. We work together. That's but right. this is always the best, Caleb. Laugh the, best the week. Way. Excited. I, I just, it's just the best part. Come on. I'm so excited. Okay, we got lots of stuff to get through. So we're just going for it. So we're talking about, about world record. records here. World, world record. records today. I heard about this one. This guy right here balanced a pool cue on his forehead for two two minutes and 16 wait two hours and 16 minutes dude two hours yeah yeah man oh my goodness i know i don't know how that's even possible why i don't think i could go 10 seconds why <laughs> i don't know he said it, the biggest challenge was neck and back pain <laughs> oh i bet yeah i bet yeah it must be hard to swallow Look, too. He had to find a high enough ceiling so that it didn't like. Yeah. At the beginning, he's like making sure it fits under the lights. <laughs> yeah, my goodness. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Wow, my neck, my neck hurts just thinking of that. I know. <laughs> it hurts to look at the picture. Okay, we found this other record right here. Okay, here we go. I got a video for you, Nathan. Check let's this let's out. watch it. Okay, so he's got a slingshot. Slingshot. And he and lets it go. Oh, and a guy. <laughs> he caught a marshmallow in his mouth. Okay, can I just add that it was in the middle of snow? It looks like it was snowing. And being yeah. able to see a marshmallow in a white sky of snow <laughs> and catch it in your mouth is just crazy. So the record was longest catch of a marshmallow in the mouth. And that was 225 feet wow they launched that yeah <laughs> yeah i know i wonder how many tries that took oh i, I bet you a hundred hundred at tries. least a million like it was crazy yeah yeah so did you guys know our church actually set a world record at one we point we did yeah 10 years ago guys 10 years ago in 2011 2011 dude crazy so the record was for most rubber chickens thrown at once yeah the, <laughs> so the previous record was yeah. 927 right caleb yeah 927 that's they what they had to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then this is what it looked like here we this are here's the, the video with 999 rubber chickens thrown right here ready boom wow that, <laughs> that was in our church parking lot guys yeah. look at that that's a thousand and, people throwing rubber chickens at once. And the guy just standing in the middle, just getting and hit just by all the rubber in the middle. That's awesome. Yeah. So actually, I must confess, 11-year-old Caleb was there that day. We have video proof, video evidence of Caleb being in attendance of there the rubber chicken. There he is. Pause it right there, Caleb. Oh, goodness. my goodness. <laughs> Guys, this is so precious. Look at this guy. What was I doing with this backwards hat? Hair. <laughs> his nice long hair my hat is Whip 10 sizes too big why did yeah. no one tell me <laughs> whipping that chicken around like he's about to chuck it across the world yeah <laughs> yeah 
the ones with my shirt why why is it so big for me <laughs> hey yeah. man 11 11 year old caleb was just a different guy yeah he was just vibing like he was look just at that doing smile his thing. he's loving life teeth. he's loving life look at that <laughs> what those teeth do baby <laughs> <laughs> look at that guy yeah nice so, man that's where I was. Guinness on World Record. Look 11, at that. You're, 20, you're in the books. <laughs> you're in the books of Guinness World Record, man. It's true. It's true. Yep. So anyway, thank you for uh, talking about world records with us. Yep. I think we set the world record for most time just talking about other people's world records. <laughs> I Yeah, I, I, we got to look that one up because I think you're right. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Let's set the record straight. Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> Have a great week, nice. everyone. Hope to see you next week. No, Be there. Great. Hey everyone, my name is Lauren and I'm so glad to be back with you today, this week, to share week three of our series called Get Out of My Mind. So today, I actually have a question for you and this question is, have you ever been confident that you could get away with something? You know, when we think about it, I'm sure you know which teachers and which classes um, mark easier on tests so you know you don't have to study as hard for those classes. Or maybe I'm sure you know the coaches on your sports teams that don't push you as hard so you don't try as hard in these practices and you just rest a little bit. And I'm sure you probably know which parent to go to when asking for that second piece of cake or that second dessert. You know, we're all aware of what we can get away with and we want to know where the line is and how much we can do without getting in trouble. And the reality is, this is no different than with our relationship with God. See, as you know, in this series, we've been talking all about temptation, which is basically the desire to do something we know we probably shouldn't do. And when we face this type of temptation, you may wonder, how does God feel about it? Is God going to be angry at me? Is God going to show me grace? And so today we're going to be discovering and diving into the question about how does God react when we fall into temptation? So let's first take a look at a time that Jesus was tempted. First, we hear that Jesus was tempted in the wilderness to make rocks into bread because he hadn't eaten for so long and he was probably so hungry. But Jesus never gave into that temptation. And he basically said to this tempter that the Lord provides everything that he needs. And so he doesn't need to take matters into his own hands and make food for himself. See, later on, we see J Jesus was tempted again in Matthew 4, verse 5 to 7. Here it says this. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. See, the enemy was telling Jesus to jump, but Jesus knew that that wasn't the right thing to do. He knew that the right thing to do was to not test the Lord. The idea of not putting God to the test is the idea that we shouldn't treat God like he should do whatever we think 
that he should do. It's the idea that we shouldn't make decisions based on what we think God will or will not do for us. See, when you actually think about it that way, if that's the way that we're living, making decisions based on what we think God should do for us, then we're switching places with God and saying we're in control and God needs to respond how we think he should or how we want him to. Now, don't get me wrong. God does forgive all of our sins. And if we do something that we're not proud of, God can forgive you and he will forgive you. But it doesn't mean that there's no consequences and it doesn't mean that there may not be some negative outcomes down the road. Paul writes in Galatians 6, 7, it says this, A man reaps what he sows. See, Paul isn't referring here to farming. He's not referring to planting seeds and growing the seeds, but he's actually referring to our actions and the decisions that we're making. When you make a poor decision, it doesn't mean that God is going to try and punish you or that he is really mad at you. It means that our actions will just have natural outcomes. Think about it this way. If you were throwing a football in the house and it accidentally hit the mirror on the wall and it shattered and fell to the floor, even if your parents forgave you and they bought a new mirror, that original mirror would never come back to its original form. It would always be broken. See, based on this, we need to be wise about what we sow. We need to pay attention to the decisions and choices that we're making because we recognize that consequences are a real part of our lives. God loves you so much and he only wants what's best for you. You are his child and you are created by him. He loves you and his desire is that you can have a great life. His desire is that you can have a great now, but you can also have a great later. His desire is that you resist the temptation now because what of what it might lead to later down the road in your life. See, God doesn't want you to feel guilt. He doesn't want you to feel shame. He's just trying to set us up for something that is better. He's looking out for us now and in our future. We can trust that God only wants what is best for us. So what can we do right now to sow better when it comes to decision making and making our choices? See, here are a few places to start. Why don't you just start by thinking about the choices that you're making? Be aware of the decisions in your life that you're making. And then evaluate the direction of these decisions. See, are they taking you in the direction that God wants to lead you? Or are they, are they taking you in a different direction? And after that, maybe just try reaching out to somebody. You can reach out to somebody that you trust, like your leader or a pastor, and they can help you evaluate those decisions if you're not sure which direction they're leading you in. And if you know which direction you're, they're leading you in, just ask them to hold you accountable so that you can be led in the direction that God wants for you. One thing that I want to remind you of before we go is that it's never too late to start sowing good seeds. Even if you find yourself in the midst of a consequence from a poor decision that you made in your past, it's never too late to start and walk in a different direction. What you do now affects the life that you are going to live later. See, facing temptation is a lifelong process that requires plenty of grace. And God loves us and he forgives us and he shows us the grace that we need, even when we don't deserve it. We don't follow God to gain his approval, but he has actually already approved of us when he sent his son Jesus to come down to earth and die on the cross. Because God loves us, he just wants what's best for us. He wants to give us the best life possible. Imagine what your life could look like if you chose to trust God with all of your decisions. What if he really did lead you to the best life possible? Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for who you are and what you are doing in our lives. We thank you for the the life that you are leading us to, God. We thank you um, that we can put our trust in you, that you are leading us to a better life. You're leading us to decisions that are going to positively impact our futures, God. I pray that we would be people who put our trust in you, God, that we would live fully for you. 
God. I pray that you would help us with these temptations that we're facing and help us recognize that you do show us grace. You do love us, but you also just want what's best for us. So God, would we lean into your presence and we, would we lead, lean into your leading, God, and would we find the best decisions for our lives and take that direction, God. In your name we pray. Amen.